Hello, and welcome to this worship service. My name is Carmen Little, and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to be able to worship with you today. We begin with a call to worship. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your presence. Open our arms to embrace community. Open our minds to the beauty of truth. Open our hearts to the joy of new life. Our opening prayer. Creator and ruler of the earth, we lift up our voices, our eyes, our hearts, our lives to you in praise. Make us your Alleluia people. Uphold the weary from whom praise may be very difficult. Humble the strong for whom Alleluia may be too easy. Creator and ruler of the earth, continue to form us into your new creation that we might welcome you to more fully become the ruler of our hearts and minds through him who came as a servant, who now reigns over all creation, Jesus our Christ. Amen. In the Bible, God commands people multiple times to pray. But why do we need to pray? This is a question many Christians, as well as people with other beliefs, have asked. If you see prayer merely as a means of taking some level of control of your life and the world, as a means of leverage, then you will inevitably be troubled by what appears to be unanswered prayer. But if you see prayer primarily as an ongoing conversation with God, then you'll realize there is really no such thing as an unanswered prayer. If prayer is first and foremost a conversation between you and God, then his promise is always to listen, pardon me, his promise to always listen may be the answer your heart needs most. God might not choose to do what you ask him to do when you ask him to do it. You might have seasons when you find it hard to hear what he's saying for all sorts of reasons. It's hard when someone says no, or even not yet, to what seems like a good and valid request. But if prayer is first and foremost a conversation between you and God, then his promise to always listen may be the answer your heart needs most. There is a famous verse in the Bible that is often misinterpreted, and it's vital to the questions we're thinking about here. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Psalm 37, verse 4. You can interpret this verse as saying, if you focus on enjoying God, he will give you whatever you want. Or you can understand it to mean that if you take delight in God over and above anything else in your life, he will shape your heart to its wants of the things that he already wants to give you. His desires will become your desires. It's safe to say that the second interpretation is more consistent with the teaching of the rest of the Bible. Scripture does not guarantee God will provide you whatever you want right now. With this in mind, let's look at the reasons we choose to pray and some reasons we often choose not to. Prayer is a process through which we learn to trust God. He listens to us patiently. He takes our requests seriously. Then he considers everything in the context of the bigger picture that only he can see. Peter Gregg, the founder of the 24-7 prayer movement, says, In prayer, we use our will to come into agreement with God's will. Let your kingdom come. In the Bible, we read these words, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. That's from Psalm 139. If God knows what you are thinking, 
Why is he so concerned about you talking to him? Because prayer is one of the main ways you develop a connection with God. In prayer, you're talking with him, not just to him. The Apostle Paul tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's interesting that Paul does not say that when you bring your concerns to God, God will give you peace by explaining or resolving every situation you bring to him. Instead, Paul suggests that the peace of God in your heart and mind is somehow more likely to satisfy you and ease your fears than if he fixed and explained everything immediately. Through prayer, you develop a trusting relationship with God. Over time, you also learn to recognize his voice as he speaks to you. The Bible clearly shows him choosing to act in response to the prayers of his people. Through prayer, God transforms your heart so that having your requests fulfilled becomes secondary to feeling truly known by God and precious to him. God invites you to pray in all circumstances. Prayer is essential to the way he transforms you, and the Bible encourages you that your prayers can have a powerful effect in this world. So what can you expect to see happen as you commit to praying regularly? Well, every time it occurs to you to pray, you are saying, in my own strength, I cannot do all that I want to do. I need something more, someone else. You gain strength from God himself. Prayer is a way of inviting God to join you in life's struggles. You invite the Holy Spirit to do what he was placed within you to do. You realize the world does not begin and end with you. Being dependent on someone else to meet your needs is humbling. It's easy to allow prayer to become too focused on registering complaints or making requests and demands. Whether you pray for yourself or another person, you acknowledge that someone else, God, is the center of the universe. You acknowledge that he needs to change something about you, you or the situations you are bringing to him. You are surrendering your control to God. Everyone con craves control to one degree or another. Some just believe they're better at being in control than others. Prayer allows you to admit to God that he belongs in the driver's seat of your life as you communicate your real feelings about a situation. You see, prayer creates a safe space to process your thoughts and feelings. Do you feel ready to give God control of your life? Do you feel safe being completely known by God? Or does that make you feel exposed? You are under God's protection, in His safekeeping. Over time, as you pray, you will feel able to bring your whole self to, mom to your moments with God, because you trust that God is with you. The more you trust in the presence of God's Holy Spirit as you pray, the more you will learn to trust Him with the outcomes. You will feel inspired to take steps of faith. The Bible shows God wanting to act in response to prayer. God knows what he wants to do in the world and in our individual lives. He wants us to lean on him in every situation, and he wants to change the world through us. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. That's from John 15, verses 7 and 8. As you choose to bring all your fears, hopes, ambitions, and desires to God, you will see him respond in ways that speak to you specifically. So how does this sound to you? Scary? Intriguing? Exciting? 
or utterly confusing. All of these are natural responses. Prayer is a mysterious activity because in prayer you choose to humble yourself before someone you cannot literally see, hear, or touch. It's not surprising that many Christians struggle with prayer and some of us go through seasons when we choose not to pray at all. Here are just a few reasons why people sometimes decide not to pray. They have a fear of disappointment. Have you ever brought a need to God and felt like He did not do what you hoped He would do? Or worse still, gave you no sense that He'd even heard your prayer? You're not alone. God doesn't promise to answer prayers the way you want Him to. But as you spend time with God by praying and reading the Bible, you will develop trust in Him. This trust guards your heart during times when you feel let down by God or even angry with Him. But know that God is completely willing to listen to you no matter how you feel about Him at that moment. Do you ever try to pray but struggle with the feeling that you're doing something wrong? Maybe you do not feel as connected to God as you want to, or perhaps you just struggle with distraction. Even the twelve who spent three years with Jesus, his disciples, had to ask him to teach them how to pray. He answered by giving them a simple prayer that Christians the world over have been using ever since, the Lord's Prayer. Prayer is about expressing our dependence on God's Holy Spirit to live the way God wants us to live. Prayer is one of the most active things you can do as a Christian. It demonstrates that you are deciding to rely on God's strength and not on your own. The reasons people neglect or avoid prayer are understandable. Everyone experiences times when praying feels like too much hard work without any obvious reward. But if you want your relationship with God to grow deeper over time, you need to communicate with Him regularly. There are no rules about how many times each day or each week you need to pray. But the more time you spend with God, the more known and safe you will feel. God wants you to know Him in a way that transforms every aspect of who you are. Prayer is one of the ways He chooses to make that happen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 tells us, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. And now, let us, God's people, pray. O God of loving kindness, you have written on our hearts, granted us unlimited pardon, and still we look away toward earthly wants. Let us see and hear again through the faith we have and the faith we want, that we will blossom into the full fruits of eternal life in Christ. O Lord our God, your saving help is our joy. O God of loving kindness, create clean hearts, renew right spirits, and awake your written law within the hearts of all political leaders on this planet, so that their actions will restore all people to their rightful justice, mercy, and peace. O Lord, our God, your saving help is our joy. O God of loving kindness, calm the fears and pain of all who are afflicted by illness, turmoil, or doubt, and refresh the energy of all who give them care. O God of loving kindness, we offer our praise and unending gratitude for the joy and gladness of those we love, now alive again forever in your glorious and bountiful spirit. O Lord, our God, your saving help is our joy. Almighty and eternal God, break us out of our self-protecting shells to die to temporal distractions that rooted in the holy ground of Christ, our spiritual fruitfulness may nourish our souls as you guide us all into eternal life. We ask through Jesus, our great high priest and the Holy Spirit, our sanctifier, who together with you live, love and reign as one God now and forever. Amen. 
And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.